So Facebook's Libra coin is coming and a lot of people have been making content about this. I'm sure you guys are tired of all the hundreds of articles, videos, and hot takes saying that Libra is good for crypto or bad for crypto. But in this video, I'm gonna take a slightly different approach and take a look at how Libra compares to the three top coins out there in terms of market cap, and that is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. Because Libra is trying to do some of the same things as all of them, BTC, ETH, and XRP. So if you're curious to learn my take about how they compare after I read their white paper and done a lot of other research and reading on Libra, then all you have to do is just keep on watching. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin from Bitcoin for Beginners. This channel is all about learning with no frills nor fluff. So if you're about that life, want to learn with us, then all you have to do is smash that like button, subscribe down below if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell. Let's get started with this video. So just a high level overview of Libra in a nutshell, a recap per se, since I'm sure many of you guys have already read in-depth articles about this. Their goal is quote, to enable a simple global currency and financial infrastructure that empowers billions of people. So in a way, it's more like PayPal per se, or banks, or like credit card processors. They'll have a Libra blockchain though, a fast, secure, pseudonymous, which is kind of like Bitcoin. It'll have smart contracts and it'll be open source, the protocol. Libra coin is going to be backed by a reserve to give it intrinsic value. So it's going to be backed by like USD and other currencies out there. There's also going to be an independent Libra association in Switzerland for governance purposes. It's not going to be directly controlled by Facebook and only by Facebook. They're also going to have a Calibra wallet, which is a subsidiary of Facebook to kind of make transactions with this Libra coin, and this will require KYC to use. Future plans include on the technical side, APIs, testing the protocol, on the reserve side, having custodians, policies for this monetary governance, also on the association side to expand their group to about 100 members overall. So what are some of the biggest misconceptions about this project? The first thing you should know is that they actually say they will not vet developers for building apps on Libra. So it's going to be a more open ecosystem. Anyone can build apps on top and use it to reach people. But some people criticized this and said that this potentially will open up a situation like Cambridge Analytica in which people would use the app's data for harmful purposes. Just something to keep in mind. They also aim to be permissionless in the future. Right now it's permissioned and everybody was criticizing for so. But they do have a grand vision of being permissionless in the future in like five years is their timeline. Not sure if that's just all talk, all like rosy thinking. They're going to walk that back and say that tech won't support it. But that is their goal, though. There's also a big debate, especially on crypto Twitter and also in articles you may have read. Is this a real blockchain? They use blockchain all over the place, but it might just be a marketing term. But I've seen deep discussions from people I trust, like Bitcoin developers, really in-depth people who dove into their tech docs, took a look at the test net and so forth. And Peter Todd, an esteemed Bitcoin developer, says it is a blockchain, but maybe not in the conventional sense where nodes can read it and verify everything for themselves. So I'm leaning towards that it is, but there's also a lot of convincing people and people I respect who say that it isn't a real blockchain. So I guess we'll see. But either way, that is an interesting discussion that you should take a look into more. Also, is the fact that they're going to be a stable coin. It's not the traditional stable coin like Tether, where it's only pegged to one USD. This is actually pegged to a basket of currencies like USD, Japanese yen, Great Britain pound, and so forth, and potentially some other assets too, so that they can try to maintain a relatively stable value. Also, another common misconception is that Facebook is going to dominate and control everything Libra related. That's not true because they're going to be controlled by association and Facebook is just one member out of it. Of course, they're going to be taking a leading role with like ecosystem adoption. They're going to be making the Calibra wallet, which is the first way you can access Libra coins. But they're just one member of this nonprofit organization based in Switzerland. And so other people could potentially overwrite them if they wanted to. Also, Zuck's influence, he's not overseeing this like day to day, and he's also not designing everything pretty hands on. He's pretty hands back when it comes to this. He hired David Marcus, who was a big name in PayPal's days, to build this payment infrastructure, this payment network for everyone to use this global currency. And so David Marcus is the man in charge and has the most control over this. Also, as of right now, they don't have an ICO, definitely not a public one. So don't get scammed by all the other people out there telling you that you can buy Facebook coins from them. That's fake Facebook coins. You're going to get scammed. And I know a lot of people are interested because people have been asking me how to buy Facebook ICO coins. You can't, as of right now, at least. And I don't think ever. So the first coin I want to take a look at compared to Libra is called Bitcoin, of course, a granddaddy of them all. 
First of all, Bitcoin actually has investment potential. As you can see lately, it's been rocketing. Libra is a stable coin and it won't rocket. It's tied to its basket of assets. Bitcoin is also censorship resistant. It can't be confiscated. Whereas with Libra, it does have to face regulatory pressures. And so if you try to send something to like North Korea, perhaps, or Iran, you will probably get censored and get your Libra coins stopped at least and maybe confiscated. Bitcoin is also an open network in terms of you can download a full node, you can participate, you can look at the block explorer and so forth. Libra might not have some of those features available since it's not fully open. It's also a different economic design and monetary policy. Libra, if people want to buy more, they can mint more. And when they want to sell more, they'll destroy or burn those tokens. Whereas Bitcoin has its own economic design and monetary policy, which is deflationary and is capped at 21 million, as you all may know. On the other hand, Libra does require less power because it's proof of stake, and it's also way quicker and cheaper than most of the other crypto coins out there. It's also going to be way bigger in terms of mainstream adoption because it has this massive network effect. It has 2.4 billion people at the get-go to adopt, and also a lot of partners like Spotify, Uber, etc., where you can straight up just use your Libra coins without even converting to fiat, like for the most part you have to do with like Bitcoin or other coins in order to actually use it to buy something. Now, what about Ethereum, number two coin in the space in terms of market cap? Well, if you read the white paper and the technical docs for Libra, they mention Ethereum a lot. There's a ton of references in terms of like the gas model, the logs and events, the account model, and so forth. They're also going to have smart contracts in which you can automate like financial transactions and build apps for Libra coin. But it's going to be using the move language instead of the solidity, which is what Ethereum supports. Also similar to Bitcoin, Move and Libra smart contracts are going to have access to a much larger initial user base. So that's going to be a huge benefit for them. But a question is how flexible or robust can these smart contracts be? It seems like it's going to be limited in the scope. So can you build something like Augur? Can you build something like MakerDAO? Can you build something like CryptoKitties? What about gambling websites? You know, there's a lot of stuff that may be outside the purview that Move and Libra ecosystem will not let you to build. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Similar in vain in that, censorship resistant smart contracts, will Libra allow that? Probably not. Also privacy, how much privacy can you bake into the protocols, right? Ethereum has privacy zero knowledge proofs like ZK Snarks, will Libra ever have something like that since they require KYC and will largely have identity baked into the system? I guess time will tell. Ripple is another big one and before I dive into my points, I'm going to read a tweet by Peter McCormick who says, a day before Facebook releases their white paper, Ripple announces a $50 million investment in MoneyGram, a big money transmitting company. But he thinks that Facebook coin will eat MoneyGram alive because it will have low fees, money arrives instantly, and no need for agents. Whereas MoneyGram is a big ecosystem around the world, but they have low fees, they do have exchange rates, money arrives in minutes instead of a few seconds, and also that you have to access their agents which have 350,000 worldwide, which is a lot, but it's also the old ecosystem as compared to Facebook where you could send peer to peer and use it in different merchants that accept it. So also Ripple's built more for the banks, right? They help banks do like cross-border payments and like intercurrency conversions, but you can also use Ripple for P2P cross-border payments and remittances per se when you want to send money back to your home country if you're like a Filipino worker or so forth. So in Facebook's case, they're going to build on and off ramps for Facebook to get your local currency, right? But you can also spend directly with partners, like I said, which is a huge boon for Facebook, a huge benefit. So will it beat the MoneyGram partnership? In my opinion, I side more with Peter's opinion on this. I think it will. I guess we'll see how Ripple reacts. Their CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, did say positive things about Facebook coin lifting all ties in the crypto space. But I'm a little bit skeptical that it won't eat into the market share of at least a lot of cryptocurrencies out there with different use cases. Specifically, other payments-focused coins like Nano, etc., are focused on fast, free, and secure payments. How does Facebook stack up with that? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below as well. So what about Facebook coins Libra's effect on crypto? It's likely going to be the most used crypto out of all of them when it launches. But on a benefit, it's going to make more people familiar with the concept of crypto in general. It's also going to give us a reputation boost for an industry that's largely considered shady by people outside this industry. We can potentially reach mass adoption really quickly with 2.4 billion users on Facebook's platform. What about Libra's effect on everyone else besides crypto? The initial group, if you notice on the right hand side, does not include any Wall Street players. They are at odds and they're being most challenged by this approach, but you do have a lot of tech and venture capitalist firms backing Facebook's Libra. Square Crypto, Jack Dorsey's company, has only worked with Bitcoin so far, but they might make a stable coin themselves in the future. This also directly affects them. 
What about MasterCard and Visa? They're inside Libra's partnership, but also if people use Libra coin a lot to pay for stuff, MasterCard and Visa also faces an existential threat in my opinion. What about Amazon? Amazon might also want to look into building their own coin because in China, if you know about China, how things work, mobile payments dominates 90% of payments in there. People don't even use cash anymore really over there. They just use WeChat or Alipay. So is Amazon going to use its network effects and start dominating and try to fight back against Facebook's Libra? I guess time will tell. If Apple and Google join Facebook's Libra, then it's over. This is going to be the dominating one for all of them. Finally, regulators. Well, how are they thinking about Libra? Maxine Waters, on the right chair of Congress's Financial Services Committee, is saying to pump the brakes and it's kind of saying that Libra potentially needs to follow regulations and it's giving Facebook potentially too much power. France's Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire also said something similar. Senator Josh Hawley, Republican from Missouri, also said something similar, also concerned about Libra. The Bank of England's Marks Carney also said some comments. And the chairman of the State Duma Committee on the Financial Market in Russia, Anatoly Aksakov, pretty much halted Libra and said this would not be allowed in Russia at all. A lot of regulators around the world saying to pump the brakes, but if anyone can get them to change their mind, Facebook, MasterCard, Visa, pitching them with all their war power, all their influence, would be the most likely one to do so. Thanks everyone. What are you watching? How do you think Libra compares to Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll get back to you for sure. This is Kevin. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you guys next time.